The true history of this planet has been stifled from the top down. Since the inception of monotheism and the ridicule as well as outlaw in specific cultures of all pagan religions and practices, a lie has been forced upon all civilizations. You have to wonder why powerful empires were threatened enough by paganism to make the practice of such religions punishable by death. This threat didn't end during the Roman Empire. Take a look at how the founders of America by mandate of Great Britain wiped out Native American tribes indiscriminately. Great Britain has also shown some of the most brutal forms of genocide in Africa, India, New Zealand, New Guinea, and many other locations in which pagan tribes still existed. East Timor suffered from one of the most brutal genocides in all of history and was fueled by the United Nations and the United States funding during the Carter administration. Ford and Kissinger visited Jakarta, I think it was December 5th. We know that they had requested that Indonesia delay the invasion until after they left because it would be too embarrassing. And within hours, I think, after they left, the invasion took place on December 7th. What happened on December 7th in 1975 is just one of the great, uh, great evil deeds of history. Early in the morning, bombs began dropping on Dili. The number of troops that invaded Dili that day almost outnumbered the entire population of the town. And for two or three weeks, there was just, they just killed people. So the Timorese were fleeing into the jungles by the thousands. By late 1977-78, Indonesia set up receiving centers for those Timorese who came out of the jungle waving white flags. Those the Indonesians thought were more educated or who were suspected of belonging to Fredlin or other opposition parties were immediately killed. They took women aside and flew them off to Dili in helicopters for use by the Indonesian soldiers. They killed children and babies. But in those days, their main strategy and their main weapon was starvation. By 1978, it was approaching really genocidal levels. The church and other sources estimated about 200,000 people killed. Uh, the U.S. backed it all the way. The U.S. provided 90% of the arms. Uh, right after the invasion, arms shipments were stepped up. When the uh, Indonesians actually began to run out of arms in 1978, the Carter administration moved in and increased arms sales. And other Western countries did the same, Canada, England, Holland, and everybody who could make a buck was in there trying to make sure they could kill more Timorese. The last thing that the ones in power want is a sovereign group or tribe setting a positive example for others. It is important to note that followers of monotheistic religions are not to blame, just as not all members of Freemasonry, intelligence agencies, fraternal orders, or political organizations are part of the esoteric agenda that is being carried out in all upper echelons of society. And it's difficult for people to comprehend, but paganism is no more dangerous than understanding surgical procedures. The knowledge can be very useful when applied properly, yet it can also have very detrimental effects if misused or abused. Understand that most all of these problems are not by mistake, but by design. Most people do not understand how colors, shapes, catchwords and phrases, and biological timings are all used as talismans to affect humanity on an emotional and spiritual level. Colors are used hypnotically in every news channel and corporate advertisement. Fast food chains typically use vibrant reds, yellows, and whites in their restaurants to cause the customers to feel hurried and restless. This helps the customers filter in and out quicker to make for more customers. Fine dining restaurants, on the other hand, use very earthy, natural colors such as soft greens, blues, and browns to calm the senses and to make for a more lengthy and peaceful meal. And the same goes for the music that is played at these establishments. Specific musical notations and progressions can give relaxing or exciting stimuli to the body without our knowledge. The music industry goes even further and uses natural rhythms of the heart to map out the tempo of pop songs. This is why 72 beats per minute is used very frequently in pop music. Music is not a product of culture. In 1986, the National Academy of Science found that infants prefer consonant sounds such as perfect fifths rather than dissonant ones. This is just a small example of our natural ability to understand sound. So be very careful when placing a child in front of a TV or near a stereo. 
Those who believe that children cannot comprehend violence on a TV screen or aggression from music are thinking strictly with the left brain. The child may not rationally understand the words or actions on the screen, but the right brain, even in infants, can absolutely understand everything in its immediate environment because it transmits a frequency that can affect us on a subatomic level. Science has even proven that proper sonic vibrations are essential for the health of our vegetation. Studies done on many ecosystems have shown that when a specific species becomes extinct or moves from an area, another species will replace its song patterns to fit the overall harmony of the vibrations required for plant life to thrive. All these are known as talismans and are used very carefully by corporations and the media. Catchphrases are also used to spark certain emotions in the psyche. When the average person hears the words terror, bombing, gunshots, murder, war, assassination, and so on, the body and the mind respond with heightened alertness and caution. And when events such as assassinations of major leaders, bombings, terrorism, or war happen on large scales throughout the world, the body responds differently at different times, marked biologically and astrologically. The tragic event involving the Branch Davidians at Waco and the Oklahoma City bombings claimed the lives of men, women, and children as they ended in flames on April 19th. This date is a pagan holiday where human sacrifice is made by fire. The tragic events of September 11th, 2001 happened on the Mayan calendar date of 6 Emox, which represents large-scale change. And when the U.S. attacked Afghanistan on October 7, 2001, this was the Mayan calendar date of 6K, which represents balancing. Please understand that these weren't prophecies or predictions. The Mayans simply understood the body's natural cycles. So these unfortunate events are not by chance. One needs only to look at the result of the major political decisions of the United States since the inception of the United Nations to catch a glimpse of the ultimate goal. Every major war, assassination, terrorist attack, or security weakness exposed has two specific common themes. One, the unfortunate event makes worldwide news and scares or angers the public. And two, the result, no matter what, is always the expansion of government and the destruction of constitutional freedoms. It doesn't matter what the excuse or the explanation is, the result always tells the truth. A child can give the greatest excuses every time he's too sick for school, but if it always happens on the day of a test, the truth is revealed by the result. The major media outlets can give every explanation in the book as to why war is declared, assassinations happen, and terrorist events take place, but if they all end up in the expansion of government and the destruction of constitutional freedoms, the truth is revealed by the result. And because the vast majority of the public are completely ignorant of natural biological cycles of man, it is increasingly difficult for them to accept that these events are by no means an accident.